Daryl Lamont Jenkins. He is the founder and director of One People's Project. He is an anti-fascist activist. He's been on the show before, but I invited him on the show today to talk about what happened this weekend at the American Renaissance Conference in Tennessee. That is Jared Taylor's uh, white supremacist, white nationalist conference that happens once a year. There's generally been counter protesters there in the past. Um, Daryl goes every year. But this year, for the first time, we actually saw Proud Boys there. Um, so to start off the show, let's play your clip that you uh, posted from Idavox about what happened. Yeah, we burned down our own cities for two years. No, you're not. You're with us. Oh, so we walked all Yes, you did. Yeah. You came down here to have a barbecue because you knew we would be here. You fucking snowflakes like to intimidate people and to play the goddamn victim. Like you didn't fucking come up here looking for a fight. We came here looking for a fight. We're fucking barbecuing, motherfucker. Go walk up the hill. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, hey, hey. Barbecue. 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 So, Daryl, it, it looks like they were pretending to have a barbecue, but they were actually there to engage in some con some confrontations. I understand there was another confrontation where one of them used some sort of a expendable baton and hit someone. What's the whole yeah. story there? Yeah. I mean, the way the guy said barbecue, you thought it was a safe word or something, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> right. <laughs> it was weird because, um, I, I could tell you, like I said, like you said, we've been, um, coming out to that particular conference in the woods of Tennessee, um, for the past 10 years now. Um, and the crowd that we would have can rank, can vary. It can be about a hundred people. It can be fifteen to twenty. This year we was at the fifty to fifteen to twenty mark, and and you know I think uh, and we realize why. Interestingly enough, no matter how much we have had um, blown up this conference, and lot, as much as people um, know that this conference is happening, the locals don't. Oh, okay. But they're starting to learn and it's trying to figure it out. And um, in fact, this year we got um, the Cumberland Presbyterian Church to denounce the American Renaissance Conference in a statement. As a matter of fact, that's that's going to be the next um, video that I post up on Idavox. I'm, I'm just actually today. I'm just coming back. I'm back. Oh, in New Jersey. Well, I'm glad you can join us. Yeah. This is breaking news. <laughs> And um, so I'm just trying to get reconfigured, so to speak. So, um, but so, you know, we had a skeleton crew. We had about 15 to 20 people out there and they were coming from obviously Jersey. They were coming from uh, um, Atlanta and some other parts of the um, state, Knoxville, um, you know. Uh, and we did have somebody from Cumberland Presbyterian Church come, but they were flying in from San Francisco oh. and they had, um, they told me that they was just concerned. The, the, um, the congregation was just concerned about the possibility of violence. Mm. And our attitude was that there was nothing to worry about simply because we've never really had it. Right. I mean, it's always been just something ranging from a peaceful vigil to a shouting match. And then we all go home. Right. Right. Um, there's only been one time that there has been some acts, some violence, and that came from whenever somebody from American Renaissance's um, conference um, attacked one of our people and got thrown into the lake for his troubles. Yeah. So, Gerald, let me ask you this. Generally speaking, Jared tells the attendees not to engage with the counter protesters. Correct. Protesters, right. So. All right. So but the, the, again, the Proud Boys, that's a whole and, different conversation. Right. <laughs> and this is where the fun begins. Now, we all okay. know that the Proud Boys have been basically trying to show up wherever they can start some trouble over the um, past couple of months. And uh, I guess we were next on the bill. <laughs> uh, we have um, never seen the Proud Boys there as Proud Boys. I mean, Jason Kessler used to be a Proud Boy. Right. He was there to, um, this year. And he had, um, and, and so they showed up and we were like, first off, you're not supposed to have any firearms on the uh, on uh, 
the, the public lands there. Yeah, this, is, the this is owned by it's, the state, right? This is the just state? for them. This is, I okay. mean, really, this was just this just for this um, weekend. Otherwise, it okay. wouldn't be a problem. But now we, um, but so I just want to, um, I just want to preface that, make the point known that uh, you weren't supposed to have any firearms on the um, in the grounds on the grounds. So we would assume that that means not supposed to have weapons, right? So we're there. We're um, we're in the um, spot that we were holding our little vigil and yelling and screaming at the building. And here comes these cars and trucks that were um, driving down the hill. We thought they were workers because there's already a sign up on top of the hill saying that this is a walkway and no vehicles are supposed to go past a certain point. They went past that point. When we saw the yellow and black, we said, "Oh wow, okay." <laughs> Thank you for coming. Right. <laughs> now, the video that you saw was actually round two. Round okay. one, unfortunately, um, we had problems with the video. Um, we can't play it. But in round one was me approaching, um, you know, the Proud Boys, the Assemble Proud Boys, and uh, just trying to see why they were there. And, they, of course, they were trying to say they were just there having a barbecue. Um, we we don't have um, – we couldn't care less about this conference. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's there's no way that they would show for a barbecue in the middle of a public park in Tennessee no, try, that was there, hosting American Renaissance that weekend. That's nonsense, yeah. Yeah, but there's no way about six there's or no seven way. guys dressed in Proud Boy colors and and carrying um, retractable batons would just so happen to want to do a barbecue <laughs> in this expansive park right, right. where we are. <laughs> So, yeah. we, so, so no one was buying it, and they knew we weren't buying it. it the one thing about Proud Boys is they like to play plausible deniability games. Yeah, hundred percent. And but it gets weirder because you know I'm sitting there talking with them, they're yelling and screaming, saying we know who you are and all of this BS. And all of us, so all of a sudden, one guy starts running up to us, and his name I, we have his name. His name is Ryan um, Ryan Horowitz. He's out of Nashville. And he's the guy in the denim shirt and in the denim vest with um with punk with punk rock badges um patches on his um vest of bands that are actually decidedly anti racist and anti fascist. Yeah. They're more on our side. Nausea. Okay. And he discharge <laughs> capitalist casualties. It's in the name, people. It's a... <laughs> That's kinda um, wild. He's confused. So the, so here's so here's the fun part. Proud Boys actually, you you will never really see Proud Boys um, try to stir anything up with people of color with black people. They would never get into it with black people. So so it was pretty interesting how I'm standing right there, and um, Horowitz comes up to the guy next to me, the little white guy next to me, yeah. and starts and starts getting in his face, getting nose to nose, calling him the N word, and Yes, yes, yes. That happened a lot from this guy. That is and so weird. Then he had he, he attempts a headbutt. He fails. Then his um boy, who who is still trying to identify, comes with his retractable baton. And I asked about that. So, oh, so you got your baton? Um, and he started making threats about how people are going to start getting dropped. And he and then one thing led to another. He made a move. He got a lucky shot in on my boy, and um. And basically everybody came to the table. <laughs> so it was just um, so mayhem. In a minute, it, it took a little minute, and everybody and they pulled back, and and what you saw immediately after was that um was that second move that was made that okay. you see on Idavox. And you see how Horowitz once again shoves my man, his his boy come comes after him. His boy is black. That's when Hall would step back in and was like, Yeah, I noticed that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, they're concerned about the optics. They want people to believe they're they're not racist, uh, but we have so much evidence saying otherwise. We have so much evidence saying otherwise. In fact, um, while they was wearing shirts that said F Nazis and F anti Antifa and all that, uh, it was really interesting when we um, when we uh, found out what cars were there. One of them belonged to somebody who was a notorious um, neo-Nazi, notorious white supremacist yeah. in the area. So, so he was with the Proud Boys. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we have a whole history of, of Proud Boys that are associated. Brian James mm -hmm. was coming to my mind. So no, there's definitely crossover. There's always been crossover. Um, you know, I have a feeling or a theory that at this point, the reason the Proud Boys are showing up to American Renaissance is what's left of the Proud Boy group, like what didn't get decimated after January 6th. A lot of these guys are much more committed to more extremist positions yeah. than uh, before. So it seems on brand to me that they would show up to this uh, conference this year. Yes, and we was trying to figure out where um, what, what we, we're waiting to see what Jared Taylor will um, will do. Um, and okay. uh, how, he's, how he's going to respond to Jared Taylor being the uh, founder and publisher of American Renaissance, the website. Right. And, um, you know, it was because uh, uh, normally, like you said, he basically tries to keep away from this kind of violence. But the one thing that the Proud Boys are good for is plausible deniability. Yeah. And whenever <laughs> that happens, um, and, and this was a perfect example of it, to be honest with you, um, uh, Jared can simply play. We don't. We didn't know anything about this or right. some kind of nonsense. But the fact of the matter is, now it's happening. Now it's happening. And Here we are. Even if he is not going to, uh, even if he wants to play dumb, um, if in fact he's playing, uh, the city, the state can't. The park department can't. Right. They know now. I mean, and they can. They can. And here's the other interesting thing. Last year, in the same spot. Um, we had um, a whole bunch of cops all over the place. We had cops um, sitting at the building watching us. Right. Um, those cops were not apparent this time. They were not there. They were not there. Um, well, when we tried, well, one guy um, actually tried to um, cross the little bridge between our area and the um, and the building and they told us don't cross the barricade somebody came out and said no you stay on your side some nonsense right. like that so they were watching but they were, they were not enforced watching. the okay. way they were last year and in years past hmm. in addition whenever you drive up to the area if you're going to um they're right there at the at the entranceway they direct you to where you are going to go if you are with the uh, the conference you're going to the conference if you're with the uh uh, if you're with the protest or if you're otherwise not, you go in the other direction. We went in the other direction. Now, that means the police that saw the Proud Boys drive in saw them wearing their colors. And they can play like they didn't know um, they that they were Proud Boys. Right. But they were still wearing the F Antifa shirts, F Antifa shirts or or F Nazi shirts. So, you yeah, know, and the, they had the laurels, the gold laurels. Clearly, yeah, I mean, it was it Proud was, Boy tire. Yeah. Yeah. So we knew who. So everybody knew who they were. Everybody knew who they were. So the fact that they were allowed to go into that area makes us wonder what the heck was going on. Um, round three happened when we went to go up to um, my um, my rental and and basically get um, gear to help our um, help our um, person take care of his head or whatever. Um, and they thought that they was going to make another move. We once again got into it. No one got hurt because I tried. I was trying to encourage everybody. No, nope, don't do it. Don't do it. Not right now, because we have to take care of our boy. And um, and as soon as we got up to the hill, that's when the park rangers came down. Okay. That's when the park rangers came down, and they started taking um, uh, statements from various people. Um, they said they could not arrest um, Harwoods or or anybody um, from the Proud Boys, including the guy with the baton, because there wasn't any um, evidence. evidence. I mean, we th we have the video evidence of the of uh, round two. But um, not the initial, but okay. It wasn't, but it wasn't enough as far as the uh, police were concerned. Mm -hmm. So so that's that was the day. I mean, pretty much what I say about that is that the locals weren't familiar with this conference until this year now which is wild it's been there for a decade hiding in the woods the one yeah. thing that's important to remember is that um there isn't any ground there weren't any um people on the ground ginning this um concern up and people know what was going right. on we were there i'm coming from new jersey a lot of us are coming from other parts of tennessee nashville proper only has but a few people that changed <laughs> this year so okay. if jared taylor if american renaissance happens again at this there'll park, be a greater car that uh, 15 group, to 20 yeah. is gone right. forever yeah. that 15 to 20 people is gone forever we're going to be out there and we're going to make yeah. sure that we're out there we got to be 
Yeah, no, I feel you there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk with you about is there was an Idaho police officer that had been billed on the guest speaker list. He was using a surname, Derek Vinlander. Uh, Vineyard, for folks that, Vineyard. Oh, Vineyard, pardon me. Uh, and his face had been blocked out. We now know who that guy was. Um, I wanted to play, before we get into who he is, I want to play a clip really quickly of Jared Taylor speaking with him um, a few months back. I also want to mention that on the American uh, Renaissance website, this uh, cop has written multiple articles that are unbelievably racist. I mean, like shockingly racist articles. And he is saying that he's a cop. So I often tell, I mean, when you and I come, uh, have conversations, it's whenever, whatever the worst crime of the day is, it's usually either a black person or, or somebody, a uh, non-white. I mean, of course, white people do DUIs, they do domestic violence, they steal. And, but when it's something where you, where you pause and go, holy cow, I can't believe that happened in this town. It's almost without exception. It's, it's somebody that's not from there and it is, is a black person. It's, it's almost without fail. So this 5%, these are the most disagreeable and uh, repellent and potentially dangerous uh, experiences for you. Almost without exception, yes. I understand that uh, uh, blacks very frequently resist arrest and they accuse you of racism. Over and over and over you get this. Is it, is it fair to say that uh, at least an, a profoundly uncooperative attitude is something that you can count on and that chances are you're going to get a resistance, a violent resistance, and accused of racism. Is it, that pretty much what you can expect? It's a script. <laughs> That's what happens every single time, no matter what the case is. Um, you can catch them just finishing beating someone, and during the subsequent resisting of arrest, the fight, we're, we're called racist. It's during the actual event. We can catch them in the act, and the mere fact that we are catching them is racist. It, it's 100% of the time we're accused of being racist, especially in this town, obviously, because you know there's so few black people there, but when we do encounter them, of course it's gonna be white officers because that's mostly what we have. And when they get attacked, when they get arrested, that's they're gonna scream racism every single time. I just saw an example of it last week. It's, it's every single time that comes up, every single time. They don't hear themselves, Daryl. They, they seriously don't. They don't see themselves. <laughs> He's complaining about being called out as racist and where is he uh, who yeah, is he and, talking to and he's also <laughs> saying racist things so um just for folks that we've talked about this on the show before but i want to mention this really quickly for anybody that isn't familiar or hasn't seen those shows so um jared jared taylor would consider himself to be a, what he calls a race realist which is sort of a bi biodeterministic uh, viewpoint of what race is meaning that Inside the races, they're biologically determined. Your IQ is uh, hardwired to your race, like in a whole bunch of other hogwash that's completely debunked and untrue. It's like old race science, but he clings to these things, right? So that is his position. I think if you asked him if he was a neo-Nazi, he'd say, no, I would say you're wrong, Jared, you are, but that's a conversation for another day. So this cop, Derek, obviously, he's Dan out there in the- It's Daniel Vineyard. It's, the, um, it's, the, it's a character- oh, Daniel. Yeah, that's right. I keep it's a character that. from American History X that's played by Edward Furlong. Right, right, right. So his real name is Captain. Um, now that we have his real name, his real name is Captain Brang Nelson. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So he was a Brindelson. captain. Brindelson. He was a captain. I mean, he's way up there in the police force. This is shocking to me. You know, when you understand what police are about, it isn't shocking at all. Fair. I mean. Fair. And when you talk, and he said himself in that clip, Moscow, Idaho doesn't have a lot of um, black people there. So, you know, that lends itself to some really questionable to underscore effect attitudes about black people, not just um, amongst the police, but amongst the community as well. I mean, I just um, came back from um, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I'm not sure how far away from Moscow it is, but when you see how but you get an idea of how, um, uh, how should I say, um, how, the, you know, the prevailing notion about people of color are in in Idaho. I mean, how Idaho is a very racist monsters. state. Yeah, there's a lot of right wing extremism in Idaho. That's been the case for a long time, I Which, believe. But it's curious because they have yet to find because Moscow, Idaho was also where those four college students were murdered recently. And um, I'm waiting and they haven't had they haven't found a suspect yet. 
Um, I'm curious as to see who that suspect is and what this police officer right. will say if that person happens to be um, um, happens to be white, you know. Yeah. And if I and if they happen to be black, I, I already know what I'm going to say. Doesn't doesn't mean anything from about um, doesn't mean anything to me because um, not all black people act that way, despite what he no. wants to say. <laughs> to yeah. him, black people um, are all like walking in uniform or some nonsense. But um, but he, he is really um, caught well, it's up. Their bi- it's the bi- biodeterministic stuff, right? So the group is monolithic because these traits are term- determined by, all- by bi- biology, right? So it's a very debunked form of race science. It's and not fact- even science. It's junk science. It's basically Oh, it's science junk science. I agree advance- with you. I 100% agree with you. It's absolutely yeah, it advances, junk science. It's it, it advances a political agenda more than a scientific one. That's correct. And he isn't even on that. I mean... He, 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 all he wanted to do really um, at this conference was complain about uh, the fact that he can't be as racist as he wants to be. I mean, right. it, it, during the conference, during the conference, he was complaining a lot about how critical race theory has affected his ability right. to police, which is curious, <sighs> which is curious because critical race theory actually um for those who know what critical race theory really is, as opposed to what Christopher Rufo on the Manhattan Institute says it is, um, critical race theory is about looking at how um, racism is utilized within our institutions, namely law enforcement. And he is saying that he, that critical race theory had affected his ability to police. He wasn't allowed to say black male anymore for a suspect but had to say dark skinned. And that makes sense. That makes sense because if you come here to New York and New Jersey, um, they numerically code the races so people don't pick up on it. Um, My brother and I was just talking about it. If you're white, they refer to you as a number one. And if you're black, they refer to you as a number two. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. that. Interesting. And um, so so he was, but he, the funny thing, he'll, he'll tell you that he could always tell a suspect was black because if the report said they vaulted over the counter, that meant they were black. Yeah, I mean, it, just, it, it just doesn't make sense. But that is the kind of things I mean, that they say and think. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that um, we, we have to deal with with our police. And, <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you something. Him being at that conference was really important for us. Former Representative Steve King being at Steve that King conference. Steve King was there, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he was actually, I mean, that 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 worked for us because he was he actually said something to the effect that uh, he actually wanted to have some sort of conference um, on January 8th, 2021. But. Or rather, let me take that back. He says, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was trying to do something for January 8th. Unfortunately, January 6th happened and that just killed everything that he was trying to do. Um, Laura Loomer, anti-Muslim activist, and she was um, she was one of the few women that have spoken at this conference. Actually, defended Kanye. I I know. So I have a really hard. I have a hard time making rounding the circle that is Laura Loomer because she's also uh, Jewish by heritage. So. Yeah, she says she actually told them. She actually told them in the conference this weekend that Kanye was right about the Jews. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I, I wish I could say I'm surprised by this, but I'm not. Um, it's sort of on brand for her. <laughs> and what other things, before I let you go, what other highlights did you want to mention that were important? I mean, I would say, honestly, that um, this conference is really important for people to pay very close attention to, this yeah. and other conferences. Uh, that Of that stripe, there's, um, there's tons of other... Uh, hate conferences that go on like this. I'm not even going into the mainstream. I'm just talking about your white nationalist conferences that take place all the time. American Renaissance is the only one that is publicly announced, that is publicly announced and um, for, um, and, and people know where to go. They, right. they announce where it's gonna be, they announce when it's gonna be. Um, being that this is the first time um, we had altercations with their side, 
regardless of what they want to say, it is their side. Being this is the first time they had a serious altercation since 2017, uh, it remains to be seen what's going to happen um, in the future. Um, but what definitely happened is that it's on everybody's radar now down in right. um, down in the Nashville area. And I know that we are going to be talking to a um, talking to people down there a lot more over the next year. So that when this happens again, uh, never mind the fact that uh, never mind trying to get people to come out, um, having people talking about this conference and having people in this um, area to, um, talking about the damage it's doing to their community right. um, is very important. The reason why uh, the the Cumberland Presbyterian Church had um, had even come out for this is because, in particular, it's general principle. This church, I mean, this church was founded on the park grounds a hundred some two hundred years ago. So oh, I didn't know that. Okay. When they found out that matter of fact, it's beautiful. Let me tell you something. Montgomery Bell Park is beautiful. And if you go and there's a certain area where there's a kind of a shrine to the founders there, to the founders of this denomination, okay. there is a uh, a little log cabin kind of house that is supposed to be a replica of the home where the founders had congregated to form. And there is a, there's a little chapel that's also there. And this chapel was hardcore. I mean, all it is, is the pews altar. That's it. That's it. (laughs) That's it. And, and and it belongs to the, um, belongs to the denomination and it's beautiful. I mean, I'm actually surprised I didn't take pictures of it, but um, hopefully I can go down there again on um, more pleasant terms because I definitely want to work with the church a lot more to talk okay. about um, and they what's hadn't know, they didn't know that this had been going on on down the road so to speak um they um had inklings and stuff like that but not everybody I, I think on the church is on board and not everybody is on at, at the church okay. um, has an idea of what they want to do in regards to it. This year they figured, okay, yeah, we got to say something. It's gone we too far. Yeah. I mean, I think and, in, in the wake of January 6th, a lot of folks there were maybe on the fence before, like, this has gone too far. And now with the Proud Boys coming in, it definitely has. It, 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 yeah. I mean, one of the things that the, uh, as I said before, the, uh, the church was concerned about violence and this year they were right. And that's why a lot of them didn't come out. Um, so I, what I told them, what I told them is, look, I want to come down sometime in the springs, um, maybe in the winter. Um, um, but I would like to come down and talk with the church and, um, play this game on their terms. It, it's got, it's gotta be done on their terms. They know yeah. their community better than I do. Yeah. And, and it's important that protests do. are also involving the community there. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And I think, and then really that is the biggest mistake. A lot of people, and there's a lot of people there that wish they did know. And we're right. going to change the living daylights out of that, especially right. if we're dealing with the Proud Boys now. Yeah, because the no, Proud Boys, the Proud Boys showed us, yeah, the Proud Boys show showed us that it's violence. On. Yeah, you know they they want to solve all of their political disputes through violence, so uh, they're not and, in the same realm as Gerald Ta- Gerald Taylor saying, "Yeah, let's not engage with them." That's that's over if this is going to be a regular yeah. stop for the Proud Boys. I agree. And I got to be honest with you, um, and let's not just talk about the Proud Boys in regards to this conference because. Over the past, as I said earlier, over the past month or so, they have been a month, a couple of months now, they've been going to um, drag um, drag performances or any yeah. LGBTQ no, event, yeah. trying to cause some, uh, tries to cause some drama, trying to yes. um, get into fights with people there, and we haven't seen any pushback against them. Instead, what we get is that I have a friend of mine that's sitting in jail in Albany. Because back on January 6th in Albany, um, he, they were attacking some people and he tried to protect them and ended up stabbing two of them. So now he just got sentenced to 20 years. Um, he's going to appeal. His name is um, Alex Contapastis. I mean, sometimes you'll see him under the name Alex Stokes. Okay. Um, I'll, be have, I'll have something on Idavox about him shortly. Uh, but he's a friend, and um, I was with him in Charlottesville, and um, we talked regularly. And the fact of the matter is, he doesn't belong in jail because the Proud Boys are out there um, causing drama. And to be, and we just chased the Proud Boys out of Penn State. 
I'd right. rather Gavin McInnes out of Penn State. Um, we chased him out of New Jersey. We chased him out of New Jersey just last week when they tried to hold an event. And in the interest of, um, of um, plaus- their plausible deniability routine, they called it a comedy show. Right. <laughs> um, and this is why this is how they're going to operate, and we're just going to have right. to operate a lot better than they are. I mean, it's yeah. over. It's over. Yeah, it's over. Everybody knows they're not a drinking club. It's definitely over. Daryl, if um, folks want to follow your work and keep in touch with what you're working on, where's the best place for them to do that? You can go to OnePeoplesProject.com. And you can go to idavox.com, I-D-A-V-O-X.com. Um, you can still Ida see Idavox is your media, this, your media yes, art, right? Yes, it's the media okay. news line, yes. Um, if people want to donate, that's, um, you go to Idavox, you can click on it okay. at. We can, um, we're trying to get our fun. We got our fundraiser for the end of the year off the ground, and we want people to um, help us out as the year draws so close so we can get ready for next year. We want to thank everybody who helped us um, on this particular trip. Um, because uh, we were we were really short on cash. We're always short on cash, but uh, but we really want to make sure that we are at these events when they happen. I actually, I, I'm, I'm going to just put this out to be honest. I actually want to try to come out to the um, inauguration of of uh, the Arizona governor. Um, so oh, if anybody's okay. willing to help out with that, that'll be um, that'll be great. That's happening on January 2nd. Normally I don't like telling people when I'm coming because then all of a sudden everybody that wants to play comes. Right. So, and they start talking about You're it. You're on their hit list, Daryl. You know, <laughs> it's like, it ain't about me, but I want to try to get down there. So I'm just putting it out there. Okay. If anybody's willing to help, please do. Um, great. So, uh, so, and that's that. I mean, All yes, right. you can still see me on Twitter right? at D Lamont Jenkins and Instagram at D Lamont Jenkins. Um, but that, but that's it in a nutshell. Thanks for uh, well, thanks for popping on and sharing your uh, rendition of this weekend. I think I want to you know give as much attention to these things as possible so people know what's happening out there. I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. All right, thank you.